Hi everyone, my name is Margarida and I'm a researcher in the Population Conservation Genetics Group at the Institute of Gulbenkian Ciencia in Lisbon, Portugal. And today I will be talking how the Novo Assembly using short read sequence can be a useful tool to infer the demographic history of non-model species. So there's a wide range of approaches based on genetic and more recently genomic data to infer the species demographic history. Today, I will be talking about the Parwise sequentially Markovian coalescent method, which relies on the distribution of heterozygotic sites to identify historical recombinations events across a single diploid genome to infer the species demographic history. This method produces a plot as the one you are seeing in here, where um, each line represents the PSMC inferred for a different individual. And on the y-axis, we have the time in years from the present to the past. And the y-axis, we have the effective population size. However, the recent studies have shown that, the, the, what, that other things can be influencing the changes in the curves that we observe, such as population structure, and suggested that we should actually call it the inverse instantaneous coalition rate, IICR which will see, be the name you will see in the following graphs. So we were interested in, uh, uh, in inferring the, the demographic history of the Arnold mouse lemur. But as for a lot of non-model species, there was no high quality reference genome available. So we used the one, the high quality reference genome available for the closest species available and we infer this PSMC curve. We then decided to do a de novo assembly for our species using our data set and use that as a reference. And what we observed were two completely different curves. So we wonder that this, what could be causing this? It could be the divergence of the reference or the quality of the reference. So while we know that reference divergence uh, can, and and uh, using low quality assemblies as reference can reduce the accuracy of heterozygote calls. The impact that these have on the PSMC outcome is not very clear. So in this study, we, the aims were to assess the impact of the reference divergence on PSMC, to investigate the impact of the reference quality on the PSMC, and whether a short read the novel assembly could be used as reference. So we started by evaluating the impact of the reference divergence by doing a human PSMC using the human reference genome and uh, high quality reference genomes from increasingly divergent species, the chimpanzee, the gorilla, orangutan, even, and the rhesus macaque. We then compared the PSMCs. What we observe in here is in black, the human PSMC inferred using the human reference, in blue, using the chimpanzee as a reference and in green using the gorilla as a reference. On the right, you can see the divergences estimated for this species using MASH. And at, while the curves mostly overlap, even using a reference that diverge less than 2% already leads to an overestimation in the ancient past and in the more recent past. When we increase the divergence and we use the orangutan as a reference in green or the gibbon as a reference in salmon, we can see an even bigger, even bigger changes. We can see a silly overestimation in the ancient past, but now we have a shift of the curves to the present, as well as an underestimation in the more recent past. When we further increase the, the divergence of the reference using the macaque in, uh, in yellow, we can see uh, a bigger shift to the present, as well as a flattening of the curve in the recent past. We then wanted to understand the impact of the reference quality on the PSMC. So for that, we selected species for which we have high quality reference available, the human, chimpanzee, and Cocker LC factor. We then retrieved short reads data sets with a similar coverage as our M. Arnold individual, around 30x. We use these data sets to produce a de novo assembly for each species. And then we use this as a reference to infer the PSMC. We then compare this PSMC with the ones inferred using the conspecific high quality reference genomes. 
What we observe in here in black using the equality reference genome as reference and in green using the de novo as reference is that the PSMC is mostly overlapped. Similarly, for the, in the chimpanzee case, in blue using the de novo, we can see a big overlap of the, C, the PSMCs, uh, the PSMC curves. And for the Cockerel Cifaca, we observe the same. The curves are mostly overlapping. So given these results, we decided to evaluate the impact of the reference divergence for our species of interest. So we used the as increasingly divergent reference, short read the novo assemblies, as well as at the novo assembly for our species, and we compare the PSNCs. In this case, uh, what you are seeing here is in black the MR Noldi PSNC inferred using its conspecific the novo assembly as reference, and in blue the closest species as reference, and in green and yeah, and salmon the more divergence and we can see a drastic changes of the curves when we use the the conspecific and the closest species as reference we see two peaks a curves with two peaks but when we use the more divergence reference even with less than two percent divergence we already observe a curve com a com a with a completely different shape with three peaks so these results suggest that for non-model species, the use of reference genomes with less than 2% divergence from the species of interest can lead to drastic changes in the demographic reconstruction, that the quality of the reference doesn't appear to considerably affect the PSMC outcome, and that using a short read the novo assembly from the, the species of interest as reference appears to be a better approach than using a high quality reference even from a closely related species. I wanted to thank to all of you for listening to me and to my group, the Population and Conservation Genetics Team, to the Bioinformatic Unit for all the support, to our field collaborators and to collaborators from the University of Toulouse. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to email me. And thank you so much for listening. <laughs>